The Netflix documentary starring Prince Harry and Meghan Markle is it nearly the royal family smash hit that many had hoped and expected it to be. But that doesn't mean it isn't upsetting audiences around the world. And not just this, it seems like celebrities are not only closing doors but are also turning their backs on Meghan Markle and Prince Harry after their documentary recently made it to Netflix. Let's see what the chaos is all about. The first lady is on the go with a brand new venture. That's right, she is marketing her new book and has enlisted the help of a group of friends for a month-long schedule of speaking engagements, including Oprah Winfrey, TV anchor Gail King, and actor Tyler Perry. Additionally, last week, she shared the stage with Perry and both looked like they were really enjoying themselves. All parties involved have also been tweeting enthusiastically about their friendship and the virtues of the book. Given that, both Perry and the former first lady exchanged some really warm thoughts on what the event meant to them. According to Michelle Obama, what an amazing crowd and conversation last night at our first The Light We Carry show in Atlanta with my friend Tyler Perry. In contrast, Perry, who seemed to be walking right next to the former first lady express back saying, thank you for reminding us all that we have a light and we should use it to make each other better. But not everything is sunshine and rainbows here. You see, you could anticipate finding the Duchess of Sussex in the exclusivalist humanitarian setting. That being said, Gail King attended Meghan's baby shower and was even invited to stay with the royal couple in Frogmore when Archie was a newborn. And there is no question about Meghan's admiration for the former first lady Michelle Obama. Meghan has also been a house guest of Perry's since he provided her and Prince Harry with a home when they first moved to California. And of course, we are aware of Meghan's commitment to charitable causes. But that's the thing, there was no sign of Meghan Markle at the event at all. You heard that right? But not only is she not participating in the tour, which began in November and will end the following week, but those who have been oddly mute on the subject of her shocking Netflix documentary, Harry and Meghan. And you know how it all goes, one of the strangest aspects of the contemporary media environment is, in fact, their silence. Many people who you might anticipate would be publicly endorsing the marriage at this pivotal time are instead remaining silent. None of them have expressed any interest in appearing on the show, and neither have the Obamas or Oprah's spokespeople this week when asked why not. Even Sir Elton John and Edward and Infill of Vogue, two venerable allies, have refrained from mentioning the undertaking. Only Tyler Perry out of the aforementioned people wished Meghan a happy 41st birthday on social media this summer. Not to forget, this year, Meghan did not make it to Oprah's elaborate birthday bash in Hawaii. In fact, Oprah, who was a neighbor of Harry and Meghan in Montecito and spoke with them for that TV special in March 2021, hasn't given Meghan's Spotify podcast series even a small promotion. It seems like Oprah has drastically changed her attitude toward the pair. That's because an interview between Oprah and her friend Gail King on September 14th undoubtedly gave the appearance of remoteness. King requested her to consider the possibility of Princes William and Harry reconciling after the passing of the Queen, to which Oprah replied, I do not get into people's family matters. I know everybody who has experienced some challenges in their family with in-laws or brothers or sisters knows how difficult some of these situations can be. I am sure that, for the royal family, it is no different. But even if we were to give Oprah a benefit of the doubt here, what about Jessica Mulroney, Meghan's former closest friend, who served as matron of honor at her wedding and, as we now know thanks to the Netflix documentary, spoke to her just before Harry popping the question. Jessica didn't publicly wish Meghan a happy birthday when she turned 41 in August, and she didn't even attend her 40th birthday celebration. Honestly, their friendship seems to have completely vanished since stylist Jessica's downfall in 2020, following an Instagram meltdown with a black influencer who had accused her of racism. So, what's really happening? According to journalist Shiv and Ganani, Meghan doesn't even need Jessica to be there in her life, considering she already has a Mal and Oprah as her besties. But that is where we disagree with the Toronto journalist. Lately, Meghan doesn't seem to be having many friends around her or people she can really count on. Similarly, there is a sense that Harry and Meghan are falling off the charity list despite the Ripple of Hope event, the Netflix documentary, and the Spotify podcasts. They were featured on the cover of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World edition just one year prior. However, they aren't even on the influential list this year, far from being the cover stars. Instead, space can be found for Presidents Biden and Zelensky, as well as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, under the area titled leaders where they once took center stage. Even Joe Rogan, a contentious right-wing commentator the couple dislikes, even he is mentioned. Additionally, Meghan wasn't present when George and Amal Clooney, who were formerly friends and wedding guests, recently unveiled a new humanitarian award in New York. But, do you know who was invited and could be seen? In honor of South African Justice Albi Sachs' dedication to ending apartheid, the Clooney's invited friends in the entertainment industry to the September unveiling of their Albi Awards, which were given that name. This included British actress Phoebe Dynever of Bridgerton Renown, Donatella Versace, Meryl Streep, Dua Lipa, Julia Roberts, Gail King, Cindy Crawford, 
Jodie Turner-Smith, Charlotte Tilbury, and Gemma Chan were also among the celebrities that joined human rights attorney Amal. Following that, there was a party in the Mark Hotel's penthouse suite. Famously, it was where Meghan hosted her extravagant baby shower for Archie in February 2019. Amal was there and offered Meghan a ride back to the UK on the Clooney jet. And yet, even though it took place far beyond the Queen's period of mourning, Meghan and Harry were not present. If the Sussexes were invited or not, the Clooney's representatives did not respond to calls for comment. However, Clooney did mention a few things about his relationship with the royals. According to him, we live not too far from one another and we have dinners and stuff, and we're friends with them for all the reasons that you're friends with anybody. Similarly, later in 2019, when Meghan was harassed by the media while she was pregnant, Clooney stepped forward in her defense saying, they're just chasing Meghan Markle everywhere. She's a woman who is seven months pregnant and she has been pursued and vilified and chased in the same way that Diana was and its history repeating itself. He once more claimed that the Duchess was being treated in a manner that felt unkind a month after Meghan's baby shower in New York. But the Clooney's haven't spoken about their Montecito friends since that time. Neither side has brought up the possibility that they have crossed paths. Harry and Meghan have, of course, moved to California since the baby shower after having a falling out with the royal family. They have also come under fire, particularly for continuing their tell-all interview with Oprah when Prince Philip was in critical condition and moving on with Harry's Netflix series and book, Spare, so soon after the Queen's passing. Michelle Obama, a former first lady, is another well-known international personality whose friendship with Harry and Meghan appears to have fluctuated. The Obamas have established themselves as significant role models for Harry and Meghan's lives after leaving the UK thanks to their generous foundation and lucrative Netflix deal. Although it would have been considered as a slight to the then-president Donald Trump, the Sussexes are said to have been extremely sad that they were unable to invite them to their wedding. On the contrary, Michelle Obama's full-effect educational program for disadvantaged youths has received support from Prince Harry quite a lot. Whereas, Michelle was on a speaking tour in the UK when Meghan paid her a surprise visit to meet her backstage. Harry and Meghan, however, did not attend Barack's glitzy Martha's Vineyard 60th birthday celebration in the summer of 2021. And after the Queen passed away, Barack Obama talked movingly about his friendship with her and his admiration for her. In a nutshell, the frequent assaults on Prince Harry's family might be pulling them apart from the friends they were trying so hard to make. And that would truly be the ultimate irony. That's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.